Hello my fellow MCs, Primo here, and welcome to a very special Honkai Star Rail commentary. Today, we are talking about the 5 dilemmas F2P players face in Honkai Star Rail. So let's sit back, grind out some Cellar Jade, and let's talk about it. Radiant Spirit, heed my word. As an F2P player, the things I put the most value in when determining who to pull for are looks, gameplay, animations, meta and usefulness for the account, and characters I already own. I'm definitely more of an aesthetics and lore type of player when it comes to deciding who I want to pull for, but for others, they strictly want to pull for meta units, which I completely understand. Whoever you feel will give you the most value and fun for your F2P Stellar Jade, you should definitely choose that particular unit. Pulling for a specific character, whatever the reason may be, should not be entirely influenced by outside opinions, but guide and analysis videos definitely help in confirming your choice on the matter. Hunting for 4 star units is an interesting concept, but one that should come under careful consideration. 4 star units on a limited banner will have a rate up, which means they are more likely to be pulled. With that in mind, a 4 star rate up unit has a 16.5% chance of getting pulled per a guaranteed 4 star warp. These odds are calculated by the 50% chance you end up pulling one of the rate up characters, multiplied by the 33% chance you have of pulling the individual 4 star rate up unit. Those odds increase to 33% if you lose the initial 50-50 for the rate up 4 star units in general. You have to keep in mind when hunting for a 4 star unit, you may get lucky or unlucky and pull the limited 5 star character. My recommendation when hunting for 4 stars is that you should only do it if you don't have a guarantee for the next limited 5 star character. That way you won't be wasting your guarantee on a 5 star character you don't want. Building pity is not a real thing as pity gets transferred over from banner to banner. Do not be influenced by others that say they are quote unquote building pity. Many just want to pull immediately after getting 160 stellar jade and risk getting the 5 star they don't want, all for the sake of pulling. As an FTP player, it is essential to only pull on banners in which you will be happy with getting the limited 5 star character, as more likely than not, we will not be able to get every single character released per patch. But regardless of whether or not you pull immediately after accumulating 160 Stellar Jade or you save all your warps for a single character, as long as you're having fun, that's all that really matters. Radiant Spirit, heed my word. This may be a hot take for some, but it put more value on obtaining a new character than getting a light cone for an existing character. When I see a signature light cone, I think of it as a luxury accessory, like a really nice watch or belt. I can get by with the bare minimum, but would I prefer to have the luxury watch? Absolutely. Now this mindset would change for me in the future once I've obtained two or three teams that I'm really comfortable playing and I actively enjoy. I have found through my time playing Genshin Impact as well as Honkai that the F2P and 4 star options provide more than enough utility and damage for me to be satisfied with my character's performance. Although it's undeniable that for areas of the game like Memory of Chaos and Forgotten Hall, having the signature light cone for a 5 star character gives you a great advantage. However, it isn't the end-all be-all for an account and its progression. I found that by utilizing the light cones given to you, you can achieve the same progression as those with a signature light cone, but at a reduced pace. You may be losing out on the bi-monthly Stellar Jade and not progressing as fast in Memory of Chaos, but you are overall creating a net positive in terms of saving for your next character. Now, if you are somebody who doesn't have any interest in doing Memory of Chaos and Forgotten Hall, I would highly recommend not obtaining the signature light cone as these light cones give arbitrary higher damage numbers that create its most value in those areas of the game. Radiant Spirit, heed my word. Now this is just my personal opinion, but the order in which I level up my character is to focus on the character level first, upgrade the light cone second, farm for traces third, and then go ahead and do relics last. Focusing on the character level first is very important as this will unlock the ability to level up all other aspects of your character except the light cone. The light cone level up is based off of your current equilibrium level. My next focus would be on the light cone as leveling up the light cone gives you a steady increase in HP, attack, and defense, giving you an overall damage buff as well as increased survivability. Now traces will give you an increase in damage and utility, but this is one of the longer aspects of character leveling. As an F2P player, it will take multiple days to complete leveling up all of the available traces that you set priority to. It is very important at this stage to figure out which specific traces you want to leave unleveled to help reserve resources for more important aspects of the character. Like for example, I am not going to be leveling my basic attack for Jing Yuan as he really just wants to focus on his skill and ultimate to be able to get those stacks on the Lightning Lord. 
things like that where you need to identify which traces are going to be most beneficial for your character will help you reserve resources and overall spend them for other characters. The last part of a character that should be leveled and invested into is relics. Now my recommended level to farm relics is Trailblaze level 60 as this will guarantee two five star relic drops. Whether you use your fuel or top up with your stellar jade, which this is just absolute madness for an F2P and more whale talk. This should really only be considered when you are at a comfortable place with your character and light cone level as well as your traces. As a viewer, I'm sure you have the question of should I be upgrading multiple characters at once? Now my personal recommendation is yes, you should be leveling up your main DPS, preservation, and abundance units all at the same time. Once I feel content with those character upgrades, I will go ahead and upgrade my support characters based on their level of importance to my account. Now the reason why I suggest leveling up your DPS, preservation, and abundance characters first is because this will give you the biggest team damage boost as well as the greatest increase in survivability. Radiant Spirit, heed my word. At the end of the day, this is your account and you are the sole enforcer of how fun your Honkai Star Rail journey is going to be. Because of this, you have to build your favorites. Regardless of what the meta is, as long as you're playing with your favorite characters and achieving your in-game goals, you'll get the optimal amount of enjoyment out of your account. I personally recommend building one character of every element to be able to deal with the weaknesses of the enemies you will be facing. Having a multitude of characters to choose from will help you deal with in-game content much more comfortably and maybe it'll uncover a new favorite character for your account. However, with the release of Silverwolf, you may not have to abide by this point. I mean, I still recommend having at least a couple different elements built on your team as her skill is able to put a weakness on the enemy based on the element on your team. This unlocks mono element teams and will always give you the ability to weakness break enemies regardless of which elements you have on your team. I won't go into too much detail on Silverwolf's kit, but just know she is a great option for many players. The general consensus for how many supports versus DPS units you should level up varies from creator to creator. My personal opinion is more in line with the general consensus, which is one physical and electric DPS, two healers, and two shields. The reason why you would want at least one physical and one electric DPS is because many of the enemies you will encounter in Jurelo 6 as well as Lafu have a weakness to one of those elements. Two healers and shielders is very much in line with the need for two teams for Forgotten Hall and Memory of Chaos. If you don't have interest in that content, you can opt for one healer and one shielder. Supports can vary depending on your team need and how you want to format your squad. Generally, you want to have one to two supports per team, but these units should be built around a DPS and a healer and shielder unit. Another option is to run two DPS units on your team, with one being a single target DPS and one being multi-target. At the end of the day, this will depend on how you best want to utilize your account and your own personal strategy. Radiant Spirit. Heed my word. We must stay strong as FTP players and not buy one of those juicy battle passes. But if you must swipe the credit card, it all depends on how much you desperately want the limited 5 star unit. Now your best value for buying Stellar Jade is to buy an Express Pass which gives you 90 Stellar Jade a day for 30 days. You will also get 300 shards which can be used for other items in the shop and future skins. Some tips that help myself when trying to resist purchasing a Battle Pass or an Express Pass are planning out the 5 star you want, calculating how many jades you can obtain from now till the desired 5 star as an F2P, and not wishing immediately after obtaining 160 stellar jade. Now planning out the 5 star that you want and calculating how many jades you can realistically obtain before said character's banner is released is very helpful for an F2P player as it helps create a plan of action moving forward that will give you peace of mind. This will also help you calculate if you can guarantee your target 5 star with 180 pulls or at the very least give you a 50-50 shot without having to spend any money. Now not wishing immediately after obtaining 160 stellar jade helps me visually see the progress I am making towards that coveted 5 star unit. Now I am all in on seeing big numbers, so seeing that stellar jade count just get bigger and bigger really helped me resist the urge to pull. As I see this progress mounting and I can be proud of the fact that I'm actually holding true to the 5 star unit that I want, and I promise that patience will pay off. Hoyoverse does not have a set number of patches of when a character gets a rerun, so if you aren't willing to wait multiple patches, which is typically around 6-8 to eight months for a rerun, you may feel the need to swipe. 
I completely understand that feeling. But as I've stated before, planning out when you will spend your jades and when you can save will help yourself get the five star you wanted and patiently waited for all of these months. Now there are some things in Honkai Star Rail that I would never swipe my credit card for, one of them being a signature light cone. My points mentioned only relate to characters as they provide the main source of entertainment and the overall kit. Getting a light cone will only increase the usefulness and damage output of that character, but doesn't change the way the character is built and how it generally functions. I would also like to mention that my reasons for not swapping for a light cone also apply to constellations for a character. Now for myself personally, it just isn't worth the amount of money you are spending to get one to six copies of a character that just essentially make it function better. Content can be cleared with a C0 five star character with a non-signature light cone, as long as you have enough investment, of course. You just have to have patience. Overall, I love the challenge of being an F2P player and knowing that each warp is sacred and limited. Of course, I'm mainly disappointed knowing that I didn't obtain my 5 star target, but that is the adrenaline rush of the gacha system and it just means that much more when I do end up pulling an early 5 star or winning the 50-50. Radiant Spirit, heed my word. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary on the 5 dilemmas F2P players face in Honkai Star Rail. Now I know as an F2P player, how frustrating it is to see those signature light cones and C6 limited 5 star characters. I know for myself personally, I do get a tad bit jealous myself to swipe that credit card. With enough careful planning and patience, I promise you the rewards will be fruitful in the end. Now hopefully the gacha god can come down, bless all of us F2P players, and give us some early 5 star pulls and 50-50 wins. But if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Comment down below how your F2P journey is going and what struggles you face as an F2P player in Honkai Star Realm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.